press conference um, in which I am going to cancel some regular season games. We worked hard to avoid an outcome that's bad for our fans, bad for our players, and bad for our clubs. I want to assure our fans that our failure to reach an agreement was not due to a lack of effort by either party. The players came here for nine days, they worked hard, they tried to make a deal, and I appreciate their effort. Our committee of club representatives committed to the process. They offered compromise after compromise and hung in past the deadline to make sure that we exhausted every possibility of reaching an agreement before the cancellation of games. So far, the parties have failed to achieve their mutual goal of reaching an agreement. The unfortunate thing, maybe the most unfortunate thing, is that agreement, the one we've offered to our players, ha offered huge benefits for our fans and for our players. We have listened to the Players Association throughout the process. A primary goal of the Players Association has been to increase pay, pay for younger players. I said in Orlando, and I'll say it again, we agree and share that goal. We offered to raise the minimum salary to $700,000, an increase of $130,000 from last year. We offered to create an annual bonus pool of $30 million for our very best young players. In total, we're offering nearly a 33% raise to almost two-thirds of major league players and we're adding more than $100 million annually in additional compensation for this younger player group. The proposal also addressed player and fan concerns about issues like service time and competition. Baseball would for the first time have a draft lottery, the most aggressive lottery in professional sports. Also, for the first time ever, we agreed to an incentive system to encourage clubs to promote top prospects on opening day. We also proposed that the first and second place finishers in Rookie of the Year voting in each league would receive a full year of service no matter how long they were in the major leagues. The MLBPA asked us to make free agency more robust. For the first time ever, we agreed to eliminate draft pick compensation a change that the MLBPA has sought for decades. On the competitive balance tax, we offered a significantly larger first year increase than in the last two agreements, bearing in mind that the competitive balance tax is the only mechanism in our agreement that protects some semblance of a level playing field among the clubs. The international draft would have more fairly allocated talent among the clubs and reduced abuses in some international markets. We also listen to our fans. The expanded playoffs would bring the excitement of meaningful September baseball and postseason baseball to fans in more markets. While we preferred the 14-team format, when the format became a significant obstacle, we listened to the players' concerns and offered a compromise by accepting the 12-team format. Finally, we offered a procedural agreement that would allow for the timely implementation of sorely needed rules like the pitch timer and the elimination of shifts to improve the entertainment value of the game on the field. And we agreed to the universal DH. So what's next? The calendar dictates that we're not going to be able to play the first two series of the regular season and those games are officially canceled. We're prepared to continue negotiations. We've been informed that the MLBPA is headed back to New York, meaning that no agreement is possible until at least Thursday. As such, camps could not meaningfully operate until at least March 8th, leaving only 23 days before the scheduled opening day. The clubs and our owners fully understand just how important it is 
to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association as quickly as possible. You gonna do them or am I? Okay, Hannah. I got two. You only get one. <laughs> We never used the phrase last best and final offer with the union. We said to them that it was our best offer prior to the deadline to cancel games. Um, our, our negotiations are deadlocked right now, um, but I'm not going to get into, you know, that's different than using the legal term impasse, and I'm not going to do that. I think that um, take it or leave it in a negotiation is not something um, that uh, I think is usually productive. I think always at the end, um, there's a little wiggle room somewhere. And um, I, I think that we like to keep the idea um, that we're willing to go back to the table and figure out whether we can make an agreement. Um, Ron, the only thing I can say uh, is that from the perspective of the commissioner's office and the clubs, um, we are doing our very, very best to try to reach an agreement. Um, unfortunately, it's not something that's solely within our control. It takes two parties to reach an agreement, and we will continue to be committed to that process. All I can say, um, nothing scheduled right now. Um, and we made a proposal this afternoon. Um, I believe, without exception, every topic we have made the last proposal. Every single is issue in the basic agreement, we have made the last proposal. You draw your con own conclusion as to who ought to go next. When you guys are you know, weighing these offers with the owners and, and talking things through, how much, if at all, do you weigh the financial impact on people who aren't in the room, you know, the workers at the stadiums who get affected, and, and obviously the fans. Yeah, look, I think that um, the concern about our fans is at the very top of our consideration list, followed closely by, you know, places like where we're standing, um, where people's livelihood depends on baseball, spring training baseball, and uh, certainly an important part of the calculus for us and for our owners. Hey, James. Hey, Rob. Uh, could you explain the league's position on why you say cancellation of games and why not, say, reschedule or at least make the hope to still fit the full season in? Yeah, you know, we have a um, first-time situation in terms of the loss of regular season games. We've never, since we've gone to um, interleague play every day, um, we've never canceled games. Uh, so if you think about the way that the schedule works, every single day you have an interleague series where those teams are not back together enough to make rescheduling feasible. So do you think the pay, I guess full pay and service time will, will I guess now be something you have to negotiate with the union and players? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think that um, our position is that um, games that are not played, players will not get paid for. John. Rob, obviously there were some good things in the deal um, for the players including uh, over a 20% rise for the minimum um, pl players, the minimum paid players. However, the CBT, um, you know, how, how do you explain? It was 210 million, right? So it, you're raising it to two, uh, 220 million. That's less than a 5% rise. And then it's repeated the next two the sub subsequent years at $220 million. So it's basically only a 5% rise over three years. You know, they would tell you that inflation is up 7% now, their salaries have uh, stagnated, and, um, you know, obviously uh, they, they wouldn't uh, like that part of the deal. Look, How I, do you explain that? Well, I, I think that 
it's important to look at the pattern of increases in the CBT thresholds over the last several agreements. And I think the proposal that we made is right in line uh, with the type of increases we've seen in the past. I think you also need to remember that the last five years um, been very difficult years from a revenue perspective for the industry given the pandemic. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, and last, look, we have a payroll disparity problem. Um, and to weaken the only mechanism in the agreement that's designed to promote some semblance of competitive balance is just something that I don't think the club group is prepared to do right now. I, I look, I didn't take, I know where the clubs are. Um, I know they are 100% behind uh, the proposal that was made um, and the decision to cancel games given where we are in the negotiation. Hey, Bob. Look, um, we, we, we're in the process of, um, we went through a really long nine or 10 days. Um, we had a really late night last night um, and not a particularly productive day today. Um, I, we need to regroup and figure out how we're gonna move the process forward. That's the best I can do for you. Hey Rob, understanding the deadlines create urgency, you locked out the players to jumpstart the negotiations. It feels like real bargaining went on just in the last 24 to 36 hours. I'm sure people are wondering why not over the last three three months or even longer to get to a point where you're not necessarily canceling games because there's some momentum here. Yeah, I think the, the best answer to that question is the last 10 days. We've been here ready to bargain, full committees, owners, players for 10 days, and it got going two days before the deadline. I, you know, that's the best explanation I can give you. Rob, is, is the sport in a more perilous position uh, now than it was in 94, 95 because of the number of entertainment options that are out there, how easy it is for people to turn to a Netflix or anything on their cell phone? Yeah, the, look, the, the um, entertainment market today is different than 1994. My deepest hope is that um, we get an agreement quickly, we're back on the field, and you know we get back into that market and compete effectively. Rob, you've said many times you see yourself as a deal maker. You take pride in the previous agreements you've made. So how much do you see this outcome as reflecting on you as commissioner now? Look, it, it, the, the difficult thing about this, if, if it was solely within um, my ability or the ability of the clubs to get an agreement, we'd have an agreement. The tough thing about this process is it takes both parties to make an agreement. I'm really disappointed that we didn't make an agreement, and I'm really committed to doing everything possible to get one. Thank you. <laughs> You've been so kind, it's sorry yes, to see yeah. you go. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> really gonna miss you. Feeling <laughs> 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 is mutual. Uh, uh, I just, uh, you could argue that this is not a surprise when you look at the developments of the, of the past five years. You know, really since shortly after that 2016 CBA, there's been a lot of chatter uh, on their side. Uh, I'm wondering if you regret having done, un take understanding it takes both sides, regret not having done more on your side to try to avoid this disastrous outcome. Yeah, look, um, I, what I would say, um, Ken, is you know we did take a stab at some early negotiations. Um, throughout the five-year period, um, there was a lot of rhetoric about dissatisfaction with a deal that they made. Um, a lot of the rhetoric was negative with respect to clubs, the commissioner's office, me. Um, you know, that environment someone else created. Um, and it's an environment in which it's tough to build bridges.